Sometimes strange artifacts can tell wonderful hidden stories. Recently, I bumped into one such artifact which told a wonderful, literally hidden story about innovation. And I want to share that with you today. In the 16 and 1700s, the wealthy Amsterdam elite who made their fortune by trading with the Indies built majestic mansions in the area where I live. Far away from the noisy and smelly city of Amsterdam, they moved their households entirely for the summer months over to these mansions. A lot of them are still preserved. One of them is called Dornburg. And in the majestic park surrounding this mansion, at some point, there's a strange hill that turns up in the landscape. Once you get closer to it, it turns out not to be just a hill, but there's a door leading down and it turns out to be an ice cellar. Now, for ages, we have known that food is better preserved under colder circumstances. So the ice cellar was an attempt to keep food from spoiling for a longer period of time. In the winter months, which were truly cold here in the Netherlands in the 16 and 1700s, they would harvest ice from nearby ponds and rivers that had frozen. They would be able to keep the food cold for months on end, sometimes even until the next winter. What I find especially interesting about this is the business behind the ice, because there used to be one. In the 1800s, we used to have a worldwide business of harvesting and transporting ice. Can you imagine ice from New England or Norway being harvested and transported all over the world? Now, in the second half of the 19th century, the first commercially usable cooling technology was becoming available. So, all over the world, ice factories were being built. For the first time, there was no dependence on natural frost and no dependence on transportation. So these ice factories popped up all over the world, even in the tropics. The next step was done in the 1920s, 1930s. That's when the cooling technology was becoming commercially available for home use. That meant the first refrigerators were finding their way into our homes. Now this is of course a nice story about innovation and about the way it tends to happen naturally in steps. Like all growth in nature, it tends to happen in discrete steps. The most interesting part about this, I find to be with the people and the businesses behind all of these steps. It turns out that the people who were involved in the ice harvesting and transportation business did not start ice factories. Those were other people jumping to the opportunity of creating something new. Same goes for the next step a few decades later. The people involved in ice factories did not start refrigerator factories. In solving people's problems, we have a tendency to fall in love with our solution to the problem. We're in the ice harvesting business, not in the keeping people's food from spoiling business. That blindness causes us to miss out on the opportunity to solve the problems in a better way. If we fall out of love with the solution we are providing and falling back in love with the problem that we are solving for people, a whole realm of possibility opens up. So think about it. What is the ice you are harvesting? What is the real problem that you are solving? And think about better ways to solve it. If you have wonderful insights, let me know in the comments. 
And remember, always be innovating. See you next week. <laughs>